Hi, I'm Addie. And I'm Zach. And we're from the Santa Barbara Middle School Team Press, here with... Tim. Tim Cope from Australia. Nice to meet you, Tim. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Me too. So you have undertaken huge journeys throughout your lifetime. Tell us what inspires you to do that and whether you think that journeying in some form or another is meant for everyone. I think for me, uh, journeying is all about going into the unknown. When I was a kid, I remember looking on the map and seeing these huge countries like Russia, North America, and I wanted to know what it was like, or more importantly, I wanted to know who lived there. And for me, there's nothing more exciting than the prospect of, like on this journey by horse, getting in the saddle, and I knew that for 6,000 miles ahead, no one knew I existed. Mm -hmm. And every day was going to be an adventure. Every day I'd meet someone new, and they'd have no time to prepare their ha homes for me. <laughs> they'd have no times to prejudge me. They'd just accept me as I was. And that's when I think true friendship can be made in the middle of this adventure when strangers can become like old family. And uh, for me, in that sense, uh, adventure can be for anyone because you don't have to be uh, someone with remarkable talents or you don't have to climb Everest or go to the South Pole mm -hmm. in order to have an adventure and adventure can mean even learning a new language or doing something that's new where you learn so yeah. yeah. You said that you're first intrigued with Mongolia because it was a land without fences. What type of fences do you hope that people will take away in Western culture? Um, I think uh, the most, imp the, the most important fence that needs to be taken away is the one that um, makes people suspicious of strangers because uh, most human beings are very good and um, on the step they say that a man on the step and without friends is as narrow as a finger and a man on the step with friends is as wide as the step and I think that says a lot about the importance of going out and making friends, uh, being open to other people even if they're very different to us from different walks of life because everyone's got a talent and a skill and sometimes those things can be really valuable <laughs> in life and um, so that's the uh, most important fence to be taken down. Yeah. During your journeys, you have encountered many diverse cultures. Have you ever noticed a change in your own lifestyle due to the practices of cultures you have encountered on the road? Um, yes, I have. When I, when I went home and I was walking with my mum, walking the dogs after the trip, uh, I, looked, uh, I, I looked out into this um, environment of hills and where I'd grown up, and I used to look there and see freedom, and suddenly I, all I could see was fences and roads and I couldn't go there anymore I couldn't I knew that to walk there I have to go around like this following roads and jump lots of fences and uh, that suddenly made me feel very claustrophobic even though I was in the middle of a very rural environment where there's not many people and it's still very natural surroundings and it made me realize that I had changed quite a lot um, and I had to somehow adjust and get used to living in Australia again. And uh, I remember a week after I moved to the house where I live in now, where I wrote the book, um, this guy came banging on my window at eight o'clock in the morning on a Sunday and told me that he was going to call a sheriff because I had uh, hit my, my dog had trespassed on his property. And um, that kind of thing couldn't happen in the step because it doesn't exist. Uh, so I realised that um, I needed to adjust a bit. Mind you, that guy had a little bit of a reason to get angry because the very next week, uh, Tiggin actually made his dog pregnant. So uh, <laughs> it wasn't a good way to arrive in this new community. Uh, yeah. But I also learned about the importance of patience. There's a great saying in, in Kazakh that if you have to rush in life, rush slowly. And I try to take my time now, even though we live in a very, diff very time pressured world. We recently talked to Paul Rusasa Begina, the inspiration for Hotel Rwanda. He said that one of the best ways to create peace between people is to have them sit down and talk. On your journeys, how did, you, how did this simple act help you solve conflicts? 
Um, I think for me, being able to speak Russian language was key, and I think that speaks volumes about how important talking is. Uh, I was able to make friends with strangers I could. Uh, I, I managed with language to get through all the bureaucracy on the borders, mm -hmm. um, such as when the Russians turned me back and I had to, I tried to get back into Kazakhstan and they wouldn't let me in and I spent one month dealing with bureaucracy and in the end uh, I just trusted that someone there in the bureaucracy in Moscow would see the hum the humanity in all of this and see common sense and just give me the permit mm -hmm. and without being able to speak and without constantly being able to just converse with people and subtly but persistently persuade someone yeah. <laughs> um, uh, there was no way I would have ever made it through and I probably was able to diffuse many potential conflicts on my trip because I could speak with the people as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You made a promise to the local people who told you their stories, that you would put them in a book and share them. Why do you think sharing people's stories is so important? Um, because um, in, the, in the step, for example, their history matters to them and their history has made a a big influence on on all of world history. I mean, particularly in my area, where I travelled, um, people have been riding horses there for about five and a half thousand years, and they delivered the horse to Europe, and then Europeans took the horse to Africa and South America and Australia, and so there's a there's a our own history is there as well. Um, but more importantly, I think that. These people, and particularly the nomads, have a story to tell which we can all learn from because these people have been living on equal terms with their animals and the environment sustainably for many years. And in a world where our population is growing and um, there's a need to look to more renewable energy and sustainable practices, we can learn a lot from traditional knowledge. And um, so I think every human story matters <laughs> and we can all learn from them and uh, unfortunately we don't know much about this part of the world and I, I felt it was important to share them. Yeah. No matter where people are, they can always stop in awe of their surroundings. Tell us about one or two moments that you were truly in awe and will remember for a long time. Um, one of them was arriving in the Harkara Turgen Mountains in Western Mongolia. I actually return to there every year now uh, with a trekking group and coming, uh, I had to go through this big gorge to get into quite a hidden valley. Mm. And in this valley and on the slopes of these big mountains, there are people who live completely devoid of all the modern uh, modes of transport, the, the mechanical era hasn't really made it there yet and to see these people with their camels and their horses and there was one occasion you might have seen tonight mm. uh, that I spoke about when this camel train came down towards me from a backdrop of these 12,000 mm -hmm. feet peaks with ice and rock and and this lady really proudly wearing this big silky cloak called Adele riding her horse and towing behind her just casually you know, six or seven camels loaded up with their homes these tents called Gers and she just came down and stopped and and um, and stop made the front camel sit down and pull back the the sheet and there in this sheepskin was a baby and it was amazing to to think that these people had so much trust in their animals that they would do that they put a baby on the back of this camel coming down this path that looked really treacherous and it made me think about how closely they live with their animals like kind of like as equals their animals are their friends their family uh, they're not kind of like enslaved beings um, like they sometimes are in our society on farms um, that was a really that I, I couldn't believe it because here I was thinking that I was on this big adventure and and here was this lady just casually coming down with like six camels on her own it, it, it was incredible yeah mm -hmm. did you feel like you kind of ended up like her near the end of your journey 
Uh, I would never be like them because they they they're nomads from the day they're born. So yeah. I could never catch up. <laughs> okay. But I was much closer to them by the time I finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah.